shovels up children and pull up a rock. It is after dark, so time to spark that candle and light the flame. Tonight's tale takes us deep in the dirt, as they say, dirt don't hurt. <laughs> You ever have one of those moments in life where you about to make a big change? Well, that's what it's all about tonight. The name of tonight's tale is Painful Rebirth by Moncho Shelby. See you around, kids. Donna sat silent in the Rolls Royce. She was on her way to claim her fortune. She was winning the lottery for doing jack shit. Old Ben drove the car wordlessly for the entirety of the two-hour voyage through the Hamptons in upstate New York. He was her grandmother's manservant for more years than she could remember. Probably for more years than she had been alive. Her great-grandmother's entire work staff always unnerved Donna. They moved like bees in a hive to accommodate that old sea hag. The rolls crept into the estate in the well-to-do neighborhood. Though tranquil and serene, the peace and quiet were one of the things that bothered her even more than the stifling boredom. When the metal gate swung open, the rusty screech and the clang reminded her of lazy, boring summers wasted with old people. Then she thought of jail and started to think about how similar the two places felt. Maybe this place trained her for her life in prison. The car eased its way up the circular driveway. Old Ben stopped the rolls as rehearsed as someone would a complex dance step. In a deep and steady voice, constant as a metronome. She's in her room, Ben spoke before she even asked. Stepping into her great-grandmother's home was like stepping into a flashback. The space was open and an orchestra of echoes was the only voice to comfort you. There were windows all throughout and the outside was a perfect view of her grandmother Enrica's garden. It was dynamically lit even in the darkness. It was odd not to see her tending to it for once. Donna never liked this place, and that sentiment had not changed now in her adult years. The sound of that damned clock ticking cut into Donna's head like a form of ancient torture. Everywhere she looked were clocks, wooden clocks, antique clocks. Donna walked the mansion with confidence that nothing would or could change in the five years she had last came. She was nearly sweating from the heat of the house. It was always warm. When the youth entered her grandmother's room, her nurse and house servant catered to the old woman with an almost robotic precision. Donna was 22 and in perfect shape. Her beauty gave her an arrogance that only someone with beauty could possibly get away with. She was a brunette that had a lean frame and always held her face in a glare of defiance. Great-grandmother Enrica was well into her 90s and her body was no more than a skeleton with wrinkled skin draped over it. The plastic breathing apparatus concealed Enrica's face. Almost as if compelled, the nurse and the maid left the brightly lit room. Donna put on her best fake smile and moved forward to give her grandmother an insincere kiss on the cheek. Enrica weakly removed her breather and attempted to smile. Grandmother Enrica's eyes were the only thing on her body that didn't seem to lose its functionality due to her age. Those eyes were as shrewd as they ever were. You don't have to kiss me, Enrica said. Donna stopped in her tracks. That was the coldest thing her grandmother had ever said to her in her entire life. Enrica was warm, charitable, and sunny, something that bothered the hell out of Donna. She didn't like that holier-than-thou attitude. You never loved me, Enrica stated dryly. How could you say that, Donna said with concern. Not because it was true, but
but more so because she realized that her great-grandmother knew. No, don't worry about it. You're still going to get the bulk of my money and the estate, Enrica said. Donna did not speak. She stood dumbfounded like seeing herself inside of a dream. I'm going to tell you something that you've probably never heard anyone ever tell you. I don't love you either, Enrica declared. Now Donna showed the only true emotion since she'd been in her grandmother's presence. Shock. How could you say that, Donna said, fearing that she may lose it all if she failed this little test. No, it's not Alzheimer's. My mind is as sharp as yours. No one could ever tell you anything. Even with all the love we've given you, you've squandered it. In and out of jail, and for what? What is it that we, your family, cannot provide for you? You didn't live in the Bronx. You had every opportunity in life, but you chose to be foolish, Enrica said in a vein that would denote a raise of tone, but she lacked the strength to bolster her convictions. Now you're sounding like my mom, Donna said. Then I suppose you're ignoring me too, Enrica declared. Donna used every ounce of restraint not to lash out, knowing what it could mean for her inheritance. If you don't love me, why are you giving me all your money? You want to control me with it until you die? Donna said with emotions fluxing between rage, confusion, and bitterness. No, I'm giving you the money because maybe it will give you a fresh start. That doesn't make sense. This is a test, isn't it? Donna said, smiling. No test, Donna. You'll start over and maybe it will settle you into the person this family wished you could be. You're saying I was a disappointment, Donna said, not doing well to cover her emotion. Enrica paused as if to choose her words. Yes, you are a disappointment to the entire family. Your mother calls me and cries when we speak of you. Donna cried. She scanned the room with nefarious intentions. 